Hello, everybody. I hope that you will find this presentation very interesting. Uh, I have so many things to cover, so let me jump straight into my slide. Uh, this starts concerning. So in this presentation, we are going to build our first Laravel application. But first, we are going to learn how a Laravel application is being structured and uh, all the fundamentals that are required. Uh, but first, let me introduce myself. Hello, I'm Yanis, and I'm working as a software engineer at MailerLite. In our company, we are building a lot of products, everything based around the Laravel framework. Also, a father of our beautiful children, Sometimes they will consume all my energy, but they will pay back with a lot of love and kisses. So no complaint here. Let's check the outline of this presentation. And it will be divided into major sections. In the first part, it will be a theoretical introduction to Laravel. We will learn how to create our first Laravel application. And then we're going to explore some very fundamental blocks of a Laravel lab. Um, we're going to focus on the, on the most important concepts. Uh, I am assuming that you are a beginner and you don't have some um, important experience with Laravel. So don't worry, we're going to take it um, step by step. Next, in the next section, we are going to build our own application. It could be a very simple lab, a to-do application. And it's a simple lab because I want to focus on the Laravel part and not on the complexity of the application itself. Of course, um, in, the, in this section, we're going to live code. I promise that it will be limited to 20 minutes, approximately. Uh, and then in the next section, we're going to review what will be the next steps uh, in uh, of a bigger Laravel project. So we're, we're going to explore how this project should be implemented if we had more time to build it and more experience. Finally, there will be some q a section, so feel free to ask your questions in the chat. Let's start with um, a short introduction to Laravel, and uh, let's get familiar with uh, this framework. Uh, I will start uh, our journey from um, Laravel Docs, and I wish to create a new Laravel application. Laravel Docs are very well structured, and uh, all you need to Create your first level up is find instructions for your operating system and copy and paste something like this in your terminal. So, what this is going to do, um, let me clear everything. When you run this uh, command, it will uh, download, it will perform two actions. So, the first action is that it will download a distant. Um, a, bl a blueprint of a Laravel application. Uh, all the files that you need uh, will be cloned from uh, GitHub, Laravel project. And, and where you're going to start building uh, your own logic. But apart from this step, you're also receiving a Docker container image, which will be installed in your computer. And you don't need to understand what a Docker container is. Uh, all you need to know is that uh, this Docker image, which we are calling Sail, uh, this is a brand name for Laravel Docker image. This is a, like a virtual machine which runs Ubuntu. And inside this virtual machine, all the tools that you need will be installed and configured. So you receive PHP, MySQL, and some other tools that you will probably need um, while building your application. The benefit of this approach is that you don't have to install anything locally in your host operating system. Everything is contained inside this container and uh, isolated from your uh, own computer. Doesn't matter if you're on Windows, Mac, or even some version of Linux. Now, um, let's continue with uh, docs. <clears throat> when everything has been completed, uh, you need to start the container. And the container interact with the container through the cell command. Let me do this one myself. I will break this operation. And I will set the into an existing project that I have already inside. And um, because it will take some time. So now 
we need to start the containers. I run this command and with save, we're going to interact with the container. We're going to run to execute commands inside the container. So when we have completed this step, uh, we have a web server running and you can even visit and see how our application is looking. Let's do it. If I visit localhost, I will see something like this. This is the welcome page of the default Laravel app. Um, so this is the first step that is required to start writing some Laravel application, but I want to move on some second extra step. And this is adding a starter kit. A starter kit, again, you just need to copy and paste uh, some commands in your terminal. And uh, what, what is this starter kit doing? This will uh, add some default functionality that allows you to log in as a user, register, um, change your password, etc. This is optional, so this is not in, inside the default application, but uh, we're going to need it. So by just copying and running Composer required some packages, this package will be downloaded and installed inside your application. And I have already completed these steps. And the result of uh, installing uh, this starter kit, Laravel Breeze with the name, is this menu here. So this was added when I installed Laravel Breeze. And let me show you around. So there is some URL. If I visit some random URL, I get a not found page. If I try to register myself, I can see a nice welcome page where I can create my user. And now my user is logged in, there it is, and I can visit the dashboard. I can log out. So I'm visiting some other URL, and we're going to explore how these URLs resolve to some presentation in my browser. If I log out and try to visit the dashboard again, I'm not allowed. I'm redirected to login. So I get already some minimum functionality uh, out of the box. And let's now dive into uh, how this app is working. As I promised, we're going to explore some very basic concepts of a Laravel application. And this would be uh, routing and use. So how a request transforms to, res to response. And then we're going to visit database layer and uh, see how we can interact with the database. So let's start with routing. Routing is a process of uh, making a request to some URL. So assume that this is some domain and uh, you, you are visiting slash for URL in your browser. And you're getting this response. How is this working? When you're making a request like this, uh, Laravel will receive the request and it will try to match this part of the request. This is the path. So this is the host, the domain and the subdomain. And then we have the path. It will try to match the path with some existing path that we have defined in some special file that we're calling routes in our application. And this routes file contain a list of all the paths that you want to serve. So in this example, uh, this path will match with this route. And let's try to read this. When you visit slash foo, execute this method and return the, the return value of this method will be returned to the browser. This method returns just a string. Uh, from the PHP perspective, this is a string. And our browser knows that this is some HTML language, so it will render this as strong. And it's so simple. Now, there are a few problems with this approach. And uh, imagine, for example, that you wish to serve a few hundred or even a thousand of URL for your application. It's not efficient to have all this loads in a single file. And let's try to improve this. So the first thing that we wish to do is remove this method from here. So this method is in line. And let's move it in some other class. We're going to call this class controller. And the method will be, we're going to call this method action inside the controller. This is just terminology. And uh, we can rewrite this route as this. So let's try to read this again. Now, if you visit slash foo, your path, then send an array, you define the class name, 
so my controller, just a normal plain PHP class, nothing special, and the method name that we want to call, we wish to call. So this is um, a callable um, application PHP, and it means that we are going to call action inside my controller. And this method is just equivalent as before, it returns the same response. So we have achieved one of our goals. Our cloud file is uh, slim now. We don't have any logic here. And uh, if you visit the route file of a large cloud application, it's just like a directory, an index of the routes pointing to some method. So you also get a nice overview of uh, how the structure of uh, this application by checking the routes. Now let's focus on this part. And here we wish to improve this. So here we're returning the full HTML document, which will be huge in a typical application. And we don't want to be an, a string in line. So um, we can improve this by um, using some templating language uh, provided by Laravel, which, calling, which is called Blade. Blade views are the files of this template language. So let's try to extract this from here. And this time, instead of returning the string, this will turn the two object. And this is it. So now we're returning a view. This is a helper method. And uh, when we're using this method, Laravel will find a file with name hello and extension.date.blade.php in some predefined path in our project. And this file looks like this. So this is a normal, a valid, PHP file and all valid PHP files are also valid HTML files since there is no PHP opening tag here. And we have already, we have again make our controller action simpler by moving the template representation into some external file. But why do we need to have this uh, special template language and, uh, and don't just use HTML or PHP files? Um, this is going to give us a lot of functionality. Laravel is going to compile this into normal PHP, and it allows us to have some special uh, notation inside uh, and some special commands inside this uh, file. So let's explore a few examples. The first and most common example is you wish to display the value of an expression. And let's check this example. So this is a blade file. And when you open two curly brackets, everything inside here is a valid PSP exp expression, which will be evaluated. It can be anything, variable, uh, call it any method, command, or, or class, or whatever you wish. But the result of this expression will be evaluated and output in the uh, browser. So the browser will receive the, the value 20 here instead of this one. And uh, this is equivalent to this one. So this is a shortcut of opening PHP tag and echoing out the result of this expression. Um, <clears throat> and all the calculation will be happening on the server, on the backend. It looks like this. This is the most common um, use of some Laravel, some blade feature. Uh, but apart from this, we can add logic inside our blade views. And by logic, I mean we can have conditional statements like this one. So by uh, we're calling this blade directive, this symbol um, with some command. And this blade directive is a simple if statement in PHP. If, else, and if. Um, and this condition will be evaluated again, and only the segment that it's valid will be uh, sent in the browser. So we we'll just get this one. Sorry. <clears throat> because this is false, of course. We are going to use this uh, when, when we will build our own project later. And last but not least, the Blade has many features. Let's see how we can loop around arrays. Let's assume that we have an array of cities, like this. 
and you can loop with the for its blade directive and uh, whatever is being enclosed in these two uh, directives, it will be repeated as many times as required. So here we are looping through this array via this variable, and here we are um, evaluating this expression, which is the value of the variable itself. The result looks like this: three times the list item has been repeated. So this is. Um, <clears throat> Some very basic representation about how why do we need blade views? Why they help us? Uh, blade views um, has a ton of directives like this one, and also there's a nice feature that we can compose views from other views, so we don't need to repeat the same parts in multiple times. Now, the other module that I wish to explore before we start writing our own code is uh, database and how we can interact with the database. So what are the actions that we need to perform against our database? I will split this in two parts. The first part is actually creating the, the tables. And the second is interacting. So adding, removing, etc. And the, um, so for the first part, you can create your tables, your database yourself. You have, uh, if you have access to the server, you can log in or with some uh, tool then create the tables and the structure and the schema yourself. This is what we've been doing so long. It is very inspiring. But Laravel here has a tool that can help us create the schema, the, the description of our database, uh, that we're calling migration. The migration is a file located again in some predefined path. You don't need to memorize the stats. Uh, that will help us create these files later. And this file uh, contains a description of a table. In this example, uh, we're creating a table with name users and four columns, an auto increment ID, a string with uh, this name, another string with this name. And as you can see in the Boolean with the default value, etc. As you can imagine, this will be translated to SQL statements and will be executed when we run this migration. And the benefit of uh, running uh, describing our code with migration is, of course, that we can have uh, the history of all the actions that we did in the database, we are built our database in time, and also um, we are not writing SQL statements ourselves. Uh, Laravel has this layer between us and the database. And uh, it abstracts everything. So, for example, it doesn't matter if behind, if we are connected with the MySQL, uh, PostgreSQL, SQLite, or some other SQL dialect, everything will work. And uh, Laravel will create the correct SQL statement for every dialect. For example, MySQL doesn't have to learn, it will create a sort integer. And this is how this table looks like. This data is just for as an example. And um, again, we're going to use this when we're going to build our own table. So we have created our user table. And let's see how we can interact with this user table. So uh, again, PSP has its core methods to interact with the database. And every time that we fetch, for example, one row from a database, we get something like this. We get an array of key value pairs because from the database perspective, everything is key value pairs. There is no logic, uh, all entities are just arrays. But in an object-oriented uh, way of programming, we wish to transform this to an object because we need we wish to attach behavior. So for example, a user object would have this as a properties and could have some methods like login, log out, do this action, etc. And uh, <clears throat> since these objects are very close to database, there are a few actions that are very common. And this action, yes, this is the crude create a new user read an existing user from the database, update a user that we have already stored, or delete a user. And uh, we don't need to implement everything ourselves that Laravel has uh, this abstraction ready for us and it is being called model, model. 
show model is a class uh, that represents the structure of the underlying table and allows us to interact with the database. Everything that we do with the model will be translated again to SQL statements in, against our database. And let's make some examples with um, to show, we'll demonstrate you how you can uh, interact with database, but uh, we to switch to code now and show this in action instead of some slides. Let's visit our code editor first. And this is how the structure of the Laravel project looks like. And this is our database. So I will show you the, we have a user table. I will show you the migration that we have. And this is the equivalent migration, more complex than the one that I demonstrated, but the same concept. When this migration was executed, this table was created, and a few others for that I will skip for now. And also, the default Laravel project has a model for the user's table, and here it is. So you can see some convention here that the user model connects to the user's table. The convention is uh, singular to plural. Of course, Laravel follows a lot of conventions like this. You can always break these conventions by adding some property here that will exactly define uh, which is the correct table. Uh, but we can leave the default and we're going to use Laravel conventions here. So this model interacts with this table. And let's see, do we have anything in this table? Yes, we do, because I just registered my user before when I was making the demo for you. So what happened? It was created while recording the database. Let's try to create our own. I'm going to switch to my terminal. And I want to introduce you to, introduce you to Artisan. Artisan is a command line tool for our Laravel project, and it can interact with the Laravel application in many ways. And here, for now, I will just open a Tinker decision. As you can see, the web server is running. I didn't close the web server. And in some other terminal window, let me that's all users with database. So user is the name of my model and all is the method that gave me all users. I get an array with one item, what I have already created. So let's create our first user. Again, through the model, create, and I wish to store this in a variable. So we create a new user and we just need to enumerate all the properties and give some values. So the name should be the email. And the password. And that's all. So this is an array of key value pairs, and they would this would be inserted in the database. I have executed this. The result was a model, it was assigned to this variable, and this is the model. Now, if it's if it has already received an ID, although I didn't give the ID, it was received by the database. If I visit my database from my code editor and refresh it, I can see a second row here. Of course, again, if I check now, I would see all users. I will get two items. So I have created my first user. Uh, let's update it. So my user is already stored here, and I need to update. It's exactly the same with create. I need to enumerate all the properties that I wish to change. Just this one, it's enough. And if I check my model, it has been updated. If I check 
‫הדאטאבייס, ביניהם שוק הרבה נרדטי, ‫אבל זה לא שעשי. ‫אז זה נו. ‫אז let's try to write a query. ‫אני רוצה להגיד ‫כל יוזרים שיש לך איזו קודישה. ‫אז איפה יש את ה-SK סטטמנט? ‫אז זה אותו דבר שאנחנו נשתמש בו. ‫אז יש לך נאם, ‫אקוולס, ‫וואטאבר. And I want to get all the results. So of course, I have one user with this name, and I can write complex queries like this. I can order by, I can make some queries, and I can do query relationships. Uh, let's not go into some very complex examples, but everything is possible through this um, expression. We are calling this um, uh, eloquent level. It's the class that interacts with the database. So let's start, finally delete our user. And we just need to delete. The record has been removed from here. And so we create, update, delete, read from our database. And that's enough for what we need to achieve. And I believe that now we are almost ready to start Uh, building our first application. Um, before we start that code, let's uh, define what we need to achieve. Here is a screenshot of the final application. And uh, so what can we see here? We have a user, he's logged in. So this is already provided by Laravel and the starter kit that we have already installed. And this user has some tasks, one or two tasks here. Every task has some title, it can be completed. So this has completed, this is still pending to be completed. You can delete it. And of course, here I can create a new task. So I need to create, delete, and update. So moving from this state to this state, one task. And this task, and this user should be able to see only his own tasks. So I need to filter this list by the user is loading right now and that means that every task belongs to the user so i need to implement this relationship let's see how we are going to build our database usually we start from the database and then we are modeling this application around this and this will be our database schema so our user stable is the same that we have already in our app and uh, we need to build our tasks table And we need to have, of course, an auto increment column that we're going to use as an ID, uh, a message, which will be a string, words are in SQL, and a flag is completed to store the state of this task. And of course, we need to have a foreign key. So this task belongs to a user. We need to have a medical column pointing to the user. This is a typical one to many relationship. So if you read this, a user has many tasks and the task belongs to one user. This will be the lot of the relationships that uh, we could build, but we're not going to, to need them. And uh, I think that uh, with all this, we are ready to start writing no code. So what do we need to create? We need to create our table, tasks, And we need to create along with uh, our table uh, our model. So we need a model, a table, and it will be a nice idea to group all the routes uh, in, in order to point to a single controller. Usually we're grouping um, routes of the same concept uh, within a, a single controller. This controller could be our tasks controller. And let's try to create all this with a single one. Now we can create these files ourselves, but la, uh, artisan can help us. So sale, artisan, let's see what else we can do with artisan. Make, make command. Artisan make, we can create a lot of resources for our project. And now we're interested about this one, the model. So let's make, Model 
it will be the task model. And along with the model, Laravel can create some related resources. So it can create its migration, slash M. It can create its controller, so slash C. And uh, I'm going to also use, use this lag resource, which will add into our controller some default methods. I already know that I need to create, update, etc. And by making the controller resource, I will receive this methods. So let's run this. And let's visit our code editor. You can see with the orange color, the new files. I have already a migration, and Laravel was smart enough to name it tasks, although I asked for a task model. It follows its own convention. And I have a model here. And also, I received a controller. It could be available in a few minutes. Uh, so let's start by uh, creating our migration. What do we need? We have the output treatment column already for us. Let's also create the message, which is the string. And let's create I want this to be default false, so I don't have to set it every time. And of course, and the foreign key that will point to the user, user steady. So steady. the foreign key is just an image by itself, but I can use this enter method. So that is the type we match exactly the expected type. So now that I have created the migration, I need to run the migration, and this will create this table here. How do we run migrations? Again, we start with that. So that is um, this command will run all the pending migrations. Only one migration has not been executed. Everything else, these migrations were executed when I created uh, the application. So you will see one migration was completed. If I refresh my tables, I receive the new table. And we're, we're finished with the migration part. Now let's move to our models. Do we need to do anything here? Absolutely not, because we're following convention and the task will point to the task table. Now, actually, I wish to make a small modification and uh, by default, Laravel will try to protect our models from accidentally changing their values. Uh, but here, we are going to disable this protection. We can guard all properties uh, just to make it easier for us. Uh, it's not important. Now we're finished with the task model. And we can now try to build our view. So let's see what we want to see. I will log in again. And uh, I am now visiting the dashboard uh, URL. And I can see some view here. I wish to change this and replace this with uh, what I, uh, the, with the place that I wish to have for my application. So let's hide this, this view and replace it with the content that I wish. Uh, how can we find uh, what, are, what is the view that is being rendered here? Let's try, start. In our house file and see where is this point. So this is my route file. You can see that there's a path for the um, slash. But the slash path is the is that there's no path. This was the welcome page. And this is the dashboard. For the dashboard, I'm returning the view dashboard. Let's find this view. So this was the welcome page, and this is the dashboard. And if I if I remove this and refresh the page, of course I have removed the template. Now I wish to replace this with um, 
I have already prepared the template for the new application. I don't wish to write this with you. It will take some time and it's not interesting. I just copy this from um, um, place where you have this to find the page. And I'm going to paste it here. Now I will refresh the app. And for the same URL, I can see online to do application. Of course, this is just a HTML template. There is no logic, nothing works. Uh, all these buttons, so I need to add the logic myself. So let's take it step by step. Let's start by um, adding a new task in my task list. So I can see that I have a form here with a submit button, and let's call it. Let's find it in our template. Here we are. This is a form with an input with name equal to message and a something button. And it is posting to some URL. And uh, usually, every time that you need to take some action, you are going to write a URL that responds to this action and send this to a controller where you're going, going to write the logic. So uh, let's decide where do we want, how do we want to look this URL. Let's post to task. I want to create a new task. So in posting to task, I'm going to write this route. And I'm using the correct method that matches the HTML verb, verb. And the path is task. And I want this to point to my controller. Now, here is my controller. And if I open this, you will see that I have some methods already. And I want to use the store method. This is where I want to point. So the controller and the method. Every time that I'm posting to this URL, I will hit this method. So let's start the file. Now, if I try to submit this form, uh, you will see that it will not work. I will get an error message that the page has been expired. This doesn't help me understand what's happening. Uh, actually, Laravel doesn't allow me to post any form unless I can verify that I'm this is the center of this form. It, here it is trying to protect us from some common vulnerability. And in order to unlock this URL, I need to post a, a, a special value along with my form. So if I go here, I need to have a hidden input with a predefined name and predefined value. You don't need to write this yourself because it's provided by a Laravel Blade directive called CSRF. Now this will be expanded to a hidden input. And let me show you. I will refresh. I will check the code of my application and This is my form. I'm posting to task. And you can see that this directive has been expanded to a hidden value with some strange um, a hidden input with some strange value. This will allow me to post now, now to my form. So if I write something and submit it, yes, I was able to hit the method. So let's take it step by step. I'm the controller. And now, what do I need to achieve? I need to create a new task in the database. So I have, I have demonstrated before, task create. And I need to give some value to the message. And to the user. And I need to decide what are these values. I will not uh, set the value to the discompleted flag because by default it will be false. Uh, let's take it again step by step. I will comment this out and I will build it. How can I get the message? The message was submitted with the form and it's available through these parameters that I have in my action. Uh, what can I do with the request object? I can get all. 
the values that have been submitted. And of course, I have the value, the hidden value, or I can get the simple. So now I can get only the value of the message. And here it is. So this is the first value that I need to put here. Now, how can I get the user ID? If you remember, I had to log in in order to be able to access this page. And then when you log in, uh, Laravel application service will always provide you the current logged in user. Can I get the current user? We have a host helper method, which will deserve to the dedicated application service. And this will give us the user itself. Now, if I try to return this, just to verify that I'm getting the current user. And here you can see that I'm getting the full model with a mail, the name, and I'm looking for the ID. So what is the user ID? How can I get it? It's the same model and I can get it as a property. And here is the ID of the current authenticated user. So this is the second value that I need to put here. And I have created my task. This will create a new task in the database. But what next? Uh, what are we going to show the user? Uh, let's redirect back to the previous page where you would see the new task being added in the list. So I will return a redirect. And where am I redirecting? Back. Let's try this. One. Two tasks, etc. Of course, I have not coded this part, but if I check my database, I should be able to see the new entries. And here they are. And the user ID is pointing to my user, the first user in the database. And this is the first user. So we're fine so far. <clears throat> we have been able to store a new task. Let's now. Uh, Render the, the list of the tasks here. And let's start. So we need to fix this URL. Let's go in our, in our routes. And this is where we are getting the dashboard view. Um, I would suggest that we will refactor this. I don't like to have inline methods here. I will draw this method from here. And I will point to my controller. So the first time to the controller. And what would be a nice method, a nice action? Index, because it's an index of uh, all the tasks. So I can go here. This will be exactly the same. And um, now I, I need to pass to this view the list of tasks. In order to pass some variable, we are uh, going to add a second parameter, which will be an array of, uh, the, para of the variables that will be sent to the view. So I'm going to send a variable. I will name it task. This will be the name of tasks. This will be the name of the tasks inside the view. And here, uh, I wish to get a list of all the tasks that belongs to the user. So let's try it. Let's try our field. I'm going to use our task model. And I want to get all the tasks that belong to the user. So where equals. And uh, we're going to use the same trick that we used before. We're going to get the user ID from the current activated user. So these are the tasks that belong to the current user. And let's get them. Now, is it working? It is. Uh, let's confirm that we have the tasks. We're going back to our view. And here is the list. 
to release these two items, one completed and one not. Um, and I promise you that here I have access to my tasks variable. Let's look around this variable. So for this, so let's display the task that confirm that we have the data that we wish. And here we have three tasks. And the um, Laravel converts these models to JSON objects so that can be rendered. And I wish to make it uh, now to give some markup. And I am going for every task to render this item. I will copy the markup from here. So it can be either completed or not. And uh, depending on the status, it will be a different representation. So I need to check if the task if it is not. I'm just going to paste. Sorry, I lost this. So I think we need back from there. Uh, if it is completed, this is the markup. And if it is not completed, this is the markup. If I refresh it, I have like three tasks and uh, I need to uh, write the correct methods. So this one and this one should be. So I'm looping, I have the task available. And from the task, I can get the message. And uh, let's make it interesting. I will transform in the database this one as completed. And let's see how it looks. One, two completed, and three not completed. So this was the second part. I was able to create, uh, I was able to display a list, and I will go to the final step for this presentation. I'm not going to um, finish all these uh, buttons. I want to show the delete. The next will be very similar. So let's find the delete action in our template. And it is. So every action is a link with pointing to some URL. And now this application is waiting for me to decide the URL and implement the controller action that will do this logic. So for deleting, I wish to delete task with ID of something. So the first ID would be this one, for example. But for the second ID, it would be this one. And how could, can I achieve this? And if I check the source code, of course, this is task one delete, and this one is task slash three delete. Now I need to write this out. And let's see what should be put here. Delete, and this will point to my controller again. And there is already one method available for me destroy, which will execute the action. So, what should we put here? Uh, this route next needs to be dynamic, so this would be like a parameter in the route, and you can define this by using this notation. So, with in curly brackets. I can write the name of the parameter. So in this one, this route will match, for example, it will match this. It will also match this one or 
actually everywhere. And the value that I would put here, it would be available within my controller. Let's see how the controller looks for this URL. Destroy. I need a controller, destroy method. And uh, so Laravel knew that I will pass the task as a variable here. And you can notice that it is already converted to a model. So when I'm visiting uh, a URL like uh, task slash one, two, three, whatever, the indicator value one, two, three, uh, will be used by Laravel and it will retrieve the task, the entry in the tasks table that matches this ID. Let's confirm that this is true. I will just, it will not delete it yet, just return this so we can verify. So if I use it task one, delete, I can see that I'm hitting this method but I'm, I'm getting the task with ID number one. If I visit the thing, it's the third task. So here I have the task model and time to delete it. If you remember, this is all I need in order to remove it from the database. And now let's do the rate back. working. So let's try to remove the third. I'm hitting the controller. I'm deleting the item from the table and I'm redirecting back and rendering the list, the new list. And it has been gone. Let's create a new one. And here it is. So I create, I delete from the database, I delete, and I'm going to stop here. I don't, uh, um, these two actions are similar with the delete or dynamic routes. And for these actions, I'm just going to use the update to change the value of the flag is completed. And it will be reflected instantly. I will leave this for you as a challenge to complete this. You can access this uh, code inside the uh, sub repository that I will share with you. And let's move on to finish uh, this presentation. So your challenge here, if you wish to uh, practice yourself, you can finish the complete and undo actions. And uh, if you want to go further, I would challenge you to add a new label, a new column in the tasks uh, with the priority. And the priority can have some values like low, normal, and high. So you need to uh, set these values when you're creating a task in your form need to be able to pick from these three values. Of course, it would be nice if you would display high priority tasks above normal and low. So you can explore these um, small challenges. Um, soon I will um, update the repository and implement all the solution of these challenges. For now, you can check it out and uh, I will share this with you. Now this is what we could achieve in uh, some very limited time. And uh, of course, we barely touched um, the structure of a modern web application. Uh, there are so many things to explore. I'm just going to mention a few. Uh, so we didn't touch the front end. We didn't write any JavaScript. Uh, everything was happening to the back end. The data template was coming from the server. Modern applications usually have some interactivity in the front end via JavaScript. Laravel pairs well, very well with all modern JavaScript frameworks, UGS, for example. And uh, it will require some certain skills in order to move into the front end world. Uh, Laravel has all the tools for R ready. We can explore this in some other presentation. Front end needs to communicate with the back end and to communicate via API. So building an API, although it looks maybe complicated, it's actually the simplest version of building the web controllers. It's similar to our web routes, but instead of returning HTML document, we're returning plain JSON objects. Actually, it could be even simpler to write an API. But APIs come with their own challenges. Uh, 
how to maintain them and how to publish them, etc. And uh, maybe all this consists just the 50% of a large application, of a modern application, because uh, handling user interaction is just one part, but implementing the business logic and uh, running complex um, uh, rules uh, cannot happen within the lifetime of a request. Uh, a request is when the users interact with the page and want to see some result, but some actions will take longer. For example, maybe you have uploaded an image and you wish to resize it, and you don't wish to resize it uh, while the user is waiting for the response. For this, you can use jobs and tools. Jobs are actions that will be executed asynchronously on the background in this on the server, and you cannot get the response instantly. Actually, it's not a guarantee that they will be executed instantly. You defer this for the future, and when it has been completed, you can check the result. Usually, we push to the jobs the most complex part of the business logic. And uh, finally, we haven't discussed anything about how to deploy a Laravel application. Again, Laravel ecosystem uh, will propose you to use Laravel Forms. It's a paid, a paid service, uh, but you can use this for your first deployment and learn all the concepts of managing a server via Laravel Forge. Now uh, we have finished this presentation here. You can check the GitHub repository of, of, this, of at this URL. And Laravel is a very popular framework. Uh, you can find so many resources. Uh, there are some very nice YouTube channels. You can find the presentation of uh, Laracon the Laravel conference online, and uh, it's a quite vibrant and active community. I wish you to have a nice journey with Laravel, and I hope that it will inspire you to write some beautiful applications. Thank you very much.